The Indianapolis 500 of powerboat racing has thundered into Key West for the 34th annual World Championships. It, of course, wouldn't be a race if this beauty, Miss Geico, wasn't in the lineup. They are back this year to defend their Superboat Unlimited World title. Now, joining me now is the driver of Miss Geico, Mark Granite. Mark, it is a pleasure to be with you again nice this you. year. I know you guys are so excited to be back here in Key West. Yeah, it, we love coming to Key West each year. This is the, like you said, the Indy 500 of our uh, of our circuit. Uh, and Key West rolls out all the stops for us. I mean, they, they, it, it, not only do we have a huge parade on Friday, um, but all the hotels sell out and we've got a fantastic crowd here. And of course, Fortunately, we've got the weather, so um, it's a great place to race. Talk with me a little bit about the preparation that you go through before the start of the race. Is there anything that you do before each race, every time? You know, um, I've tried a lot of different things. Uh, the best thing that, that I've found is to calm my mind. Um, I try and find a place that's quiet, and uh, I listen to music. Sometimes I'll you know, watch a, a show on TV, something that just kind of allows myself to clear my brain a little bit. And then just before the race, I'll go over the racetrack once again, what I'm going to do with my, through my mind, uh, how I'm going to work, uh, how, how I'm going to uh, take on different situations. And then uh, Scott and I, my throttle man and I, go down to the boat at the very last minute, get in the boat and go. I find that we, we stand around the boat and wait and wait and wait, that there's the pressure kind of builds. You get hot and, and it makes it a little more difficult. So for me, what I do each time is try and find a quiet place and, and settle myself. Paint a picture for me, Mark, as to what it's like inside Miss Geico. Well, as you can see, the cockpits are very, very small. Um, they're like a small uh, sports car, you know, and we're very, very tight. It's a tight fit. There's no air conditioning inside. There are two small fans that are blowing. And with the engine so close to us behind, uh, the heat of uh, being out on the water in Florida, it generally gets pretty hot. So there's, a, there's, there's very, very close quarters, very, very hot, and you're strapped in very tight. So you've got your fireproof clothing on and helmets, and you are, you've got an air system um, that in, in the event of a rollover or being underwater allows you to breathe and stay alive. So the, the uh, conditions are, are not very comfortable conditions for somebody to be in and say, hey, well, I'm sitting here in my air conditioning. It's comfortable for a racer. You know, the, the seats are comfortable and that we're on suspension seats. So as we take harder and harder hits, we can, it doesn't uh, go through the, our backs and, and uh, uh, hit too hard. Um, the more you, uh, you're you next to somebody at these speeds and doing it, the, the, the more, uh, uh, the closer you are. So, you know, there's, there's not a lot that we don't know. You know what I mean? Um, uh, the pressure is high because the temperature is high, because of the close quarters, uh, because of the speed and the sounds and the smells that are coming through the cockpit. You're, you're constantly, um, you have constantly, you have a constant feed from the crew chief and the crew who's talking to you about laps or, or, or uh, a track position where you are. Um, uh, they're telling us about what's happening with the engines and feeding us information on data that's happening. If a gearbox is heating up or an engine is, uh, is not running up to temperature or pressures are going wrong. So there's a lot of information on top of the racing that we're processing. Um, and, and it takes a lot of concentration. Doesn't sound too pleasant. I, I will say, you know, it's not for everybody. You know, most people leave high school, like I said, you know, or, 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 and they, there are competition days and they put them far behind them. You know, it's an uncomfortable feeling because you have the competition side where you have butterflies, you know, how will I perform? And then you throw in close quarters, very, very hot, you know, uh, uh, type uh, 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 racing. Uh, but the thrill is, is that is so intense, right? The edge running on that edge is so intense that it, it's like a drug, you know, it keeps bringing you back. It keeps bringing you back. Just when you say, I've had enough, you know, you have a perfect run. How fast does Miss Geico go? Miss Geico is capable of 200 miles an hour uh, on the water. So it's a, it's a pretty fast boat. Uh, we won't be doing 200 miles an hour out here in Key West. They've shortened the course up a little bit. So anybody coming to the race will be able to see the entire track. We used to run three miles out uh, past the reef. So uh, they brought it in closer and closer. Um, 
and we set the boat up for various conditions. We, if, if, the, if there are bigger waves, we set up for more acceleration. If there are uh, a fewer waves, then we set out for faster top end because we know we can go faster without hitting a swell and shooting the boat up in the air. Now, when you hit that 200 mark, what goes through your mind? <laughs> um, well, because we're in the boat quite a lot and we practice at very, very high speeds, it's, it's natural. Uh, you know that the boat's going fast, but the feeling of when it's up in the air, you, you essentially have gone from a boat to an airplane. And that's what these boats are about. As you can see behind us, the boat has got a big hole in the middle of it. That's a tunnel. And the air goes into that hole and it lifts up the boat at a certain speed. For us, about 120 miles an hour, the boat, the, this boat goes from a boat, a hydrodynamic vessel, to an airplane where you're pretty much an aerodynamic vessel. Um, so we lift up and we're just skipping on top of the water. So as we get faster and faster, the engines get higher and higher pitch and it gets quieter, the bumps stop and you know you essentially are flying. What a rush that must be, Mark. It is a rush. I mean, it's uh, I, every time we get into it, my heart is still pounding. It's it's uh, it's like falling in love over again. You know, you get in, you're like, okay, all right, can't wait for him to hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. When the power comes in, the feeling is like taking off in a in a jetliner. You get pressed into your seat, and uh, the acceleration starts to go, and things start coming really fast. I will say, because you don't have the wind in your face or in your hair, you're somewhat protected. You know, like you're in a car as you go faster. Um, but out in the water, you really don't have a lot of reference. So there's no trees going by or signs going by. You're, you know, you're out going faster. All you have is a GPS speedometer that you're looking at and you're watching the number climb. You really don't realize how fast you're going until you see a channel marker or a boat go by really fast. So yeah, it's a big rush. Well, you and Scotty, you really are such a dynamic duo. And I know that that's so important to have a throttle man that you feel so comfortable with. No, you're right. We, we literally have to act as one. There is a throttle man and a driver, and you must act as one. The, you can perform best as you act as one. Scotty and I are opposites. We, um, well, we are, you know, he's kind of the quiet, mild mannered guy, and I'm a little more high, high tension. And, and we, um, we just find a, found a balance. And, you know, we've raced here in Key West many, many times together. We know what we need to do. We know the job that needs to happen. Um, there's a lot of pressure inside the boat as you're running very fast because you don't have a lot of time to get a message across if you're making a turn, if we have to think quickly and, and dodge a boat or a wake or something like that. So uh, we've been together a long time. That's one of the advantages I think that we have you know, here in Key West. So we've been together for so long. Absolutely. Well, best of luck to both of you well, down so here at Key West. And tell me, Mark, this is almost the end of the season for you. So what do you do in the off season? Uh, I go fishing. Uh, I'll be down here in Key West actually for the fishing championships um, in I want to say like March or, or April or March our championships for uh, sail fishing are down here. Um, that's, it'll be a lot less pressure I think for being down here for the fishing stuff uh, but my, my uh, pastime is, is still on the water spending time but with a rod in my hand. Awesome. That's much more relaxing. Every time she closed her eyes